pray. Grant, O Lord, in the written word and through the spoken word, we may behold the living word, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're continuing our series in the Rhythms of Life. We've considered lives of worship, talking with God, next week food for the journey, but today we're looking at the subject called to serve. It's a very appropriate subject for Mothering Sunday. Some years ago in one of the churches where I was vicar, we had a baby competition, or guess the baby competition. I put in a photograph of my mum and myself when I was about six months old. I've thought a lot about that photograph ever since. What was going on when this picture was taken? What were my mother's feelings and anxieties at that time? When I tell you that that picture was taken in the early months of 1940, you begin to see why I'm beginning beginning to think about what was really going on. I'd been born in Kent in September 1939, ten days after this World War II began. My parents had lived all their lives in southeast London and Kent. And I was born in Kent, which is why I support Kent in Cricket's County Championship, because the tradition is you play for the county in which you were born. I hasten to add I was never asked to play for Kent. But because of the war, my father's job, which was designing coal-fired power stations, was a reserved occupation. And he was moved from central London to Boreham Wood in Hertfordshire down the road. And a house was found for us. We weren't actually to stay there in the end for 15 years and then only moved a couple of miles. At least my mother had my father with him. He wasn't called up because he'd been in a reserved occupation, though he was very much involved with the ARP. That's the Air Raid Wardens. Well, 1940 winter was one of the worst. My parents tell me that the thermometer in my bedroom read 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's freezing point in old money. There was a threat of invasion. The Nazis were moving across Europe and would soon be on the coast ready to invade Britain. I expect my mother was fearing a similar situation that we're seeing in the Ukraine going on at this moment. Was that going to happen here? In addition, my mother left behind two sisters in Kent who lived within a few miles of her and could have given her support in these early days, her first days as a mother. Incidentally, I was the eldest of my family, so my brother came towards the end of the war. And did my mother have postnatal depression? I've seen many bad cases of postnatal depression in my ministry. What I didn't know until very late in my, li- uh, in my mother's life was that her mother, my grandmother, had spent many years in hospital after the birth of her youngest child with postnatal depression. This is a personal story. But I'm sure that many of you will want to, might re-echo in your own life story and about your own relationship to your mother's on this day. We very much remember our mothers today and give thanks to them and all those who mother us. At the age of eight, I went to a school where I was to stay for 10 years whose motto was to serve and obey. It's one of the themes arising from our two readings for today. My mother, as a lot of mothers, had no option but to serve, and very much because of the war, to obey. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, 
It means second law. It's part of Moses' farewell speech to Israel. We heard, And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God? Yes, fear. Be afraid. But it's be afraid in a context much more of reverence, obedience, and acceptance. I'll go on to say a little bit more about why being a fear is in a different context than just being terrified. Moses goes on to say, walk in his ways. Don't stand still. Walking keeps you fit and healthy. And to love him, give yourself to God. Because in the context that God loves us, we return his love. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And observe the Lord's commands and decrees. As we're called to walk, love, serve, observe. This is what God is calling us to do. And he calls us to do this because of what he has done for us. When we read the Ten Commandments, as recorded in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 6, the chapter begins not with the words, you shall, or you shall not. It begins, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of slavery, God has done something first and foremost, and our observance of the commandments are a response to what God has done. In our passage this morning, we read, Moses goes on to, talk to, the, to tell the people that they are to, not to ignore the needs of the outsider. They're not to forget that they were once aliens in Egypt. And these words, of course, are very real to us today as we think about the situation in the Ukraine, what we can do to help the refugees from there, and also refugees from other parts of the world. Let's not forget what God has done for us. And going back to what I was saying right at the beginning, we can remember in 1940, we were not invaded. And as a result, we have had many years of peace and prosperity. But in all this, we are called to serve, and in particular, to serve in those situations where there is greatest need. Our New Testament reading is the familiar story about the wise man and the foolish man and the foundations of their houses. I'm not sure what I mentioned here in this church my uh, thoughts when I was five years old at the end of the war. They started to build houses at the top of our road. Boreham Wood, in fact, became, in effect, a new town. It was only a village when we moved there. As a five-year-old, I couldn't understand why the builders started the building of the houses by digging holes and then filling them up with concrete. Surely when you build a house, you build upwards. This was brought home to me, the importance of foundations, 25 years later when I was a curate in North London. I was taking the morning service at St. Mary's Church, Hornsey. Now this church had been built in the 19th century and was regarded as the big church for the area. When I went to the church that morning, I couldn't believe what I saw. There were huge cracks appearing. They got all sorts of supports to stop the church from falling down. Bishop was rather concerned about safety when he came. 
Well, the incumbent there was a bit of a joker and said, oh, you'll be all right, my lord. Just bring your reinforced steel mitre. <laughs> the problem was that in the 19th century, they built this big church with hardly any foundations. Well, soon afterwards, the church was demolished and a new church was built. A building needs good, solid foundations. The science of foundations has changed particularly in the last 50 years, which is why we can now build skyscrapers in London. Foundations for the Christian are just as important. A firm foundation which will withstand the flooding, the earthquakes, and the different sides of life. These foundations are built by us hearing and obeying the words of Jesus Christ. Just as Moses called the Israelites to fear, walk, love, serve, observe, and don't ignore the needs of the outsider, so we are called to serve the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul. And Jesus calls us to complete those words of Moses by hearing his words and putting them into practice. Let us pray. I'm going to use a prayer of St. Augustine of Hippo. Eternal God, the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.